Hi, I'm Derek Savage of Cool Cat Productions. I'm the creator of Cool Cat and I also produce and direct the feature films. Hey, and the reason I'm making this video today is last week I took down several videos that were copyright infringing against my content. And, and I've got a little, little heat for doing it. Now, um, there is so many lies and just misinformation on the internet about copyright infringement and fair use. So I want to make this video to show you the difference between the two right there. Bottom line, copyright infringement is stealing from someone. It's just as if someone came in your house, ripped off your stuff, and then went to sell it. Because you, especially monetizing the content, who that throws it way out of fair use. And I'm going to show you a few very recent, very famous copyright infringement cases. And I'm sure you've heard of a few of them. Copyright infringement is not a game. It is against the law and you are stealing from somebody. And only scumbags steal from somebody. That's plain and simple. Now I am not going to mention any names of anybody's websites out there because simply I am not going to give anybody any publicity. But I'm going to state this for a fact and listen closely to me. You are being lied to. You are being treated just like you're a little stinking punk. You're being deceived. And the thing is on one of the videos at timestamp 445 was said, the person said, I'm going to milk it for everything I can. And that's exactly what's happening. You are being milked. You're being treated like you're a big fat cow is what you're doing. Okay, now I've got uh, several emails. Usually I don't even see emails. My assistant takes care of all that for me. I'm producing my new uh, film right now. I don't have time to deal with this junk. But I'm making this video right here just to show that what you're hearing is nothing more than filthy lies. And, um, and I want to clarify the difference between copyright infringement and fair use. You see, years ago I studied law. I wanted to be an attorney. And, and by that experience, is what which led me into producing projects. So, you know, studying the law and Hollywood, where I lived for 27 years, you know, it was just a good tie-in right there. Okay, now I get emails, stop it now, Derek, oh, stop it. Several days ago, I emailed this boy, and I'm calling him just right out what he is. He is a lying punk troll and that's what he's doing to it that is not being a bully right there to any degree stating a fact is a fact anyone who lies to you and deceives you in my eyes is a punk plain and simple i sent him an, um, an email a nice email um just about three three or four days ago saying you know let's end this crap you know just give me a, a little apology take down those videos I'm a happy camper. I would not do any further legal actions against you, plain and simple. And I have proof that I did that because I CC'd Adam at YMS on this. I hate to bring Adam into this, but he is my proof that I tried to end this many days ago. In fact, um, he said, Derek, why you CC this? You know, I like Adam, first of all. Adam's a, a good-hearted man, and I know for a fact that he loves Cool Cat, and that is extremely important to me right there. Okay, he said, why'd you CC? He says, I'm not in this. I said, I know you're not. I just want you to know that I'm reaching out to try to end this crap and to do the right thing, to do what Cool Cat would do. And he said, okay, and so I apologize up front if it brings him in. I'm going to email him to let, let him know this. But I got proof from someone that you people know and that you respect that Derek Savage has done the right thing. Okay, once again, and let me be very, very clear on this. You are being deceived and you're being milked like a little, like a fat cow. I know the boy's playing on your emotions. Now, there was something on there. Well, how did he find the video? He must have gone out of his way to search it. That's a filthy lie. I'm too busy working to search the net. I don't have time for those games. Um, the way I find out about all of these videos out there is when people email me about them. And once I start getting enough emails, uh, you know, complaining about them, then I focus in it. I got several mothers email me say about, about this boy's um, um, crap. And says, Derek, 
You've got to address this. And that's when I'll take my time and my attention. I mean, even on YouTube, sometimes like on those videos, I'll see comments four or five months ago. I don't have the time to go there and answer them. So it's not like I'm trying to avoid you to any degree. It's just I'm always working trying to produce new content to entertain you. And that's a good thing. I love doing it. I love making movies. And I'm damn good at it too. Praise God. Okay. And that's how I find it, is, is, is complaints. I got mothers complaining. Now, here's something that people said to me. And they said, Derek, why are you doing this? This will kill your brand. Totally disagree. First and foremost, what Cool Cat stands for in the Cool Cat Saves the Kids movie, the overall message, well, first of all, you know, it is the anti-bullying and kids' gun safety movie. Like I mentioned, I lived in L.A. for a lot of years, and there's graffiti everywhere. So I got an anti-graffiti message in there also, and there's an also no stealing. Cool Cat says stealing is no good, and that's exactly what copyright infringement is. It's ripping you off. Plain and simple. Okay, but the thing is, the reason why I know it, I never hurt my brand. And I'm not stating this. I mean, over the past week, good Lord Almighty, I have sold more Cool Cat movies than I usually do in a month and a half period. More Cool Cat t-shirts. I had to place another order because I'm just I'm selling out of everything. And also on Twitter, I mean, um, I didn't start Twitter. I started doing it about four or five months ago. And I got about 2,000 followers now, right around there. I, I put it on um, private. You know, where you got to send me because just wait till all this crap gets out till the truth gets out to you. And um, I got over 2,500 requests in there. I mean, I, I literally over doubled my following and so many people have now heard of Cool Cat. But the way I know it will not ever hurt my movie is because good will always whoop lies and evil. Plain and simple, baby doll, and Cool Cat is good for children. And for all you people that have seen those BS reviews out there, you know, the ones I've shut down, please don't judge all some, you know, some punk what they say. Get your own copy of the movie. It's only $9.99. My God, you can afford that. Get your own copy of the movie and, and see how entertaining and enjoyable this film is. Bottom line, my word to you, my guarantee to you, you never seen nothing like a Cool Cat Saves the Kids film. I guarantee that. Okay, hey. Now, right here, just going to address some of the, the, the web, okay? We're going to talk about some recent case laws. Now, one thing about copyright infringement and fair use, don't believe what you read on the Internet. It's, think, you know for a fact that most of the stuff you read was rent probably by some 13 or 14 year old teenager. I had someone email me, well, it's fair use. That's when, that's when somebody's comment was on the YouTube page or, or, or on, the, on the Yahoo page. I'm going, what? When it comes to law, there's one thing you go by and it's called case law, previous cases. There's, there's one saying, that is very, very relevant in, in, in the law field. And it's called, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Always remember that. You can't go into court and say, well, judge, I didn't know it. I thought it was this, I thought it was that. No, it's not. Ignorant of the law is not an excuse. You steal from somebody, you're doing wrong. You see, I'm a very, I'm a very moralistic type man. In my eyes, there's right, and there's wrong. There ain't much middle ground, especially in the day's ground. Either you're doing right or you're doing wrong. And ripping somebody off is wrong. And that's why I file copyright infringement strikes against these people to get my content off. I mean, they didn't even have the, the common courtesy to even contact me to try to get my permission to use it. And that is a very important war that we're about to address right here, right there. Permission. Whenever you're dealing with something that's copyrighted, that someone has time and money invested in to make, you damn well better write them and beg them for their permission or ask them for their permission. And if they say no, then you don't touch it for nothing. Understand that, please. Okay?
Now, let's go right here. I'm going to do my B camera right here. This is my A camera, you know, for producing right here, and this is my B camera. Now, on this website right here, this is, um, well, first and foremost, I found all of these right here. It took me all of, oh, golly, 30 seconds, Google search. Just go to Google and punch in copyright infringement cases. This was like the third down the line. It's 99designs.com, and it's five famous copyright infringement cases. Okay, now we're going to scroll down. Now here's one right here. This is Rogers versus Coons. Okay, Rogers took this picture, Coons ripped him off and made some statues right here. You know, and, and he sold them. Once again, monetizing, trying to make commercial profit off somebody else's work is a major no, no. You cannot monetize YouTube videos or any of that crap. Remember that that is law. It will get you in a lot of trouble. And you're a scumbag to do it because you're ripping somebody off. Plain and simple. Okay, right here. Or Roger shot the, fi um, uh, the, the photograph of a couple holding on um, a line of puppies in a row. You see, it's a cute little picture. And, and they sold it on greeting cards and similar products. And international artist Jeff Coons and the pri um, created some um, created statues based on the image. Coons sold several of these structures, making profit upon discovering the copy. Rogers, the photographer of the picture here, sued Coons for copyright infringement. Now listen to this, people, please. Very important. Coons responded by claiming fair use by parody. He's trying to say, oh, I didn't steal nothing. It's a parody of their picture. And remind me, let me remind you, this is just a picture that we're talking about, a photograph. This is not a feature film, a movie, or something that years and, and thousands of dollars got invested in. This is just a simple picture right here, okay? Here's the outcome. The court found the similarities between the two images too close, and it was a typical person to recognize. Okay, bottom line, Coons was forced to pay a monetary settlement to Rogers. He whooped his butt. And because it's straight up, he ripped him off. This guy here ripped this gentleman off. And he got busted with it. Coons was forced to pay a monetary settlement. Copyright infringement, look here, can get you in a whole lot of legal and financial trouble. Let me tell you that's fact right now. Okay, here's another case. And this one is real famous, and I know that you've seen it before. Bottom line, even when it comes to water bottles, if you look in movies, I took the label off this because I don't want any problems. You can't, I mean, you can get busted for doing that right there, having, showing bottles if you're trying to make a profit off of it. This video here is not going to be monetized any bit. So, you know, but you don't, I even did that. You got to be that careful in today's world, people. But here, did this. Associated Press versus Fairly. Oh, wow, you remember this picture? It was Obama's hope picture for his campaign, 2008 campaign. This photograph was taken by an Associated Press photographer. Okay, her, um, the name is Manny Garcia. Okay, now this guy here, I believe he was out of LA, because I remember the, the, the article very closely. He stole that picture, threw some Photoshop coloring on it, and slapped hope on it. Okay, now what happened here? Um, he got sued. Manny Garcia with the AP demanded compensation, demanded money. They were suing him for, uh, for copyright infringement, for stealing that photograph right there, then altering it to look like hope, you know, Obama hope. Wow, that's turned out to be some great hope, hasn't it? But um, that's beside the point. Okay. Um, fairly, this guy, the thief, responded with the defense of fair use. Look right here, claiming his work didn't reduce the value of the original photograph. 
outcome. The artist and AP Press came to a private settlement in July of, or January of 2011. Bottom line, they smacked that guy, and when they do a private settlement like that, it's so they don't have to disclose how much money was traded hands there, or how much he got beat, you know, got smacked for stealing the artwork right there. You cannot steal copyrighted artwork or movie or anything like that. It's illegal and you're stealing right there. Okay, now just go down to this one. This one's very interesting right here. Okay, this is a picture of, I don't know, I guess a caveman. <laughs> I mean, he looks like a caveman to you. Okay, Carlo, is that Carlo? How do you pronounce it? I'm not sure. And this guy over here is some guy named Prince. He, he's a prince of thieves is what he is. He's a stinking thief. Okay, he stole this guy's picture. He slapped a, a fake guitar on it and painted a couple things on the face right there. Okay, Prince claimed fair use that he created new meaning out of the photograph right there. Claro, the artist who took this picture, argued that it wasn't fair use, but, oh, look at this, copyright infringement. Let me read that to you one time. Pharaoh argued that it wasn't fair use, but copyright infringement. Outcome, a judge ruled in favor of Claro right here, this gentleman claiming the charges made against Ferguson were significant enough to constitute a change in meaning, fair or fair use. Okay, boom. He ripped, and that's copyright infringement by just slapping a little guitar on it right there. I mean, you cannot mess with people's copyrighted material, people. Don't believe the junk, the lies, the misrepresentation that you read on the internet. Once again, it's probably some little 12-year-old kid, you know, just sitting there writing it. Don't believe it. Go by case law. And the thing is, this took me all of 30 seconds to find these cases. So there ain't no excuse not to educate yourself on this. Once again, always remember, education is the key to life. And when you get older, you better be educated to make a living in this world. I'm saying that to you because I care for you. Okay. Now, here is the one that I really want to bring to your attention. And I know for a fact, I'll bet you that 99.9% .9 of you have heard of this case or, and are aware of it. It came down about a year ago. And Blurred Lines copied this song. Copyright infringement. Okay. This is the... Peril, is it Parel? Is this how you pronounce his name? Parel, I think. I like his other song. It was really good, man. I, I, he's a talented young man. But this Robin Thicke right here, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't see no good in that guy. But these two people right here, well here, Parallel and Robin Thicke lost a copyright infringement case. And what they did is on Blurred Line Song, they infringed on the copyright of an earlier song by Marvin Gaye, um, Got to Give It Up, released in 1977. And here's something that I want to really, really emphasize to you. And please listen closely. Parallel and Robin Thicke got ordered to pay $7.3 million. And all they did, I mean, how long is a song? About three minutes. All they did was a simple beat in that song, a simple beat. And they mashed it up to a uh, Marvin Gaye song, and they got smacked. They got fined. They got penalized. $7.3 million. Copyright infringement is not a game. And if you live in your mama's house, if you're younger, you can get your parents to lose their house. That's how serious this is. When you're being sued, if, they're, if you're using a computer in, in other people's houses, they can legally be tied in and responsible for that. So, I mean, seriously, people, please never steal somebody's content. Okay, I'm going to go back to you once again. That boy is lying to you. He's deceiving you. And as his words, He's going to milk it all he can. And you're the fat cow he's milking right there. Derek Savage reached out days ago to put a stop to this. And of course, 
I don't care to get this crap, you know, all these, these emails. But the thing is, not unless you wrote a few threats and all of those were forwarded to the proper legal authorities. They got your IP addresses and everybody. So did you be careful there. But if you just wrote a simple, Derek, this, I am not mad one bit at you. Simply because you got pumped up, you got deceived, and you got slapped. And really, you got treated like a little punk bitch. And that makes me mad right there. I don't like, especially if you love Cool Cat, I don't want any of my Cool Cat friends out there, people who love this fabulous movie. <laughs> hey, baby, you know Cool Cat loves you. I don't want none of you to be deceived. So, you know, listen to what I'm saying here. Guys, this is part one. Part two is coming tomorrow. And now you know who to direct your hate toward. And it's not Cool Cat. So get busy. And in the meantime, be sure to get your Cool Cat Saves the Kids feature film, the anti-bullying and kids gun safety movie. And also, everybody needs a Cool Cat Loves You t-shirt available in both adult and small sizes. Available on eBay or visit CoolCatLovesYou.com. Take care.